Hello and welcome to another episode of Crazy About Fly Fishing. I have taken the plunge and I'm going to be learning how to do Euro nymphing. I've been wanting to do it for a long time. It's an exceptional way to catch trout. So I'm taking the plunge and I'm going to learn how to do it. So what I'm going to do to help you is do a series of learn Euro nymphing with me. In this series, you'll be able to follow along and learn with me. And you'll also be able to give me tips and advice and help me along my journey as well. So we can learn this together and hopefully catch a lot of fish. So let's start with my setup. So I've gone for an entry level setup from I Love Fly Fishing. This is their V-Nymph full weight 10 foot rod in four pieces that uh, they sell for Euro nymphing in their combos. So I'm gonna try that. And for a reel, I just have the glass fiber reinforced fly fishing reel from I love fly fishing. It's a cheap entry level reel, but pretty much indestructible, really good and tough. Something to note with Euronymphing reels is that people often use a full cage reel so that the thin diameter line can't slip out. So something that is coming to I love fly fishing is gonna be some of the trapper range of uh, Euronymphing reels. So I think there'll be a full cage reel on that, but we that hasn't arrived yet, so I'm gonna be using that. What has arrived from trapper, something that I love fly fishing is gonna be stocking is the trapper Euronymph GST fly line. This is an ultra thin level fly line designed for Euro nymphing and it has a indicator tip as well. Now there are a few options for line and leader setups for Euro nymphing and I've done as much research as I can. I've watched many videos. I'll link a bunch of those in the description. Keep in mind I'm learning so I'm trying a bunch of different things. Um, so that's one of the options. That's probably what I'm gonna go with for now and I'll explain a little bit later why I've gone with this. Another option from I Love Fly Fishing is this one weight Euro nymphing line. It's only five meters long, but I'll explain this is a very versatile option as well, which you can use with a normal fly line or normal reel, and you can also set it up as a dedicated Euro nymph setup. So I'll explain a little bit more about that later. I'm not initially gonna use this, but I might use this on some of my other reels. Other things I've got is just 100 yards of backing for my reel. I also have a section of Duo Trapper Sighter line. So this is a bicolor line that you use as your sighter. And then I've got some standard nine foot three X tapered leaders as well which I'm gonna potentially use on one of my leader setups. Alternatively, I've got uh, 2X Chameleon. Many people use the Maxima Chameleon. This is the Isla Fly Fishing Chameleon line, which is very good. Then I've just got Tippet. I use 3X for a carbon, and I've also got 0X, which I can use for leader building leaders as well. An alternative option to the Sighter line is this. This is the Scafaz Neon Wax. Uh, you get it in a bunch of different colors, and if you use two or three colors, you can just mark up anywhere on your leader and you have a very high vis sighting option as well. If you wanted to use a fully clear leader and be able to adjust and wipe your sighter quite a bit, you can use one of these as well. What I'm gonna do first is just put the backing on the reel and then the fly line. I'm not gonna show you that, that you can watch some videos of how to do that. Now that we have the line on the reel, we have to talk about leader setups. This is the trickiest part. I've really struggled to understand all the leader setups and options. Something that you have to take into account and what I have to take into account here in New Zealand is your local regulation. That does have an impact on your leader setup and the fly line and the things you can choose. There are two regions in New Zealand that have different licenses and different regulations. One is the fish and game, which is most of the country, and the other one is the Department of Conservation in the Taupo region. Something to note, in the Taupo region, there's a couple of requirements. Firstly, you have to have a fly line and there's a minimum length to the fly line. Secondly, your leader and tippet setup, the total length of that, cannot exceed 18 foot. The thing there is that many leader setups recommend a really long butt section and you can't do that due to that regulation because if you do that, you'll have too long a leader setup and your rig will be illegal. That's where this Euro GST nymph line comes into account. It's a really thin diameter fly line. It's level, it won't have an issue when you have it out of the rod tip, so it won't sag and it won't drag your flies around and it will shoot fairly easy out of the guides as well. So that means I can have a shorter leader under the 18 foot limit, have the connections out of the rod tip and then be able to shoot this line instead of a long, long butt section. So the leader I decided to build is very similar to the Orvis Guide to Fly Fishing, the one they recommend and I'll put a link to that video in the description. And it's also very similar to the pre-made leaders that I Love Fly Fishing sell in their combo as well. So before we get to the leader setup, let's talk about alternatives to this GST, the full nymph line. If you were to use a normal fly line and you stuck with the 18 foot maximum leader requirement, you'd end up getting the fly, fly line out of the rod tip. It causes a sag, it's quite heavy, it will drag your flies around, and it's not great. The thing is, sometimes you just want a nymph with your regular reel and your regular setup. Now this little line from I Love Fly Fishing is ideal for that. This is only, I think, five meters long. It's a one weight level line, two loops either side. You can use the loops or you can choose not to use the loops and use nail knots. What you can do with this, if you wanted to use your normal fly line and reel, is simply loop to loop this section of level line to your fly line and then build your leader off that. That means you've got a longer 
easy to cast fly line out of your guides and you can still meet the maximum leader length requirements so if you didn't want to buy a full nymph fly line like that you can just use this as your fly line and build your leader of that and attach this either straight to the backing or you can have more shooting line behind this as well if you wanted this whole section out of the rod tip now back onto the leader so i'm starting with a nine foot tapered leader this one goes down to 3x so i want a really smooth connection between my fly line and the tapered leader if i was to use a loop to loop connection and tie a loop in this I'd end up with quite a thick knot in there that would struggle to go move through the guide. This GST fly line has got a micro loop, which is really thin and smooth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go a little bit down the thickest part of the butt section and just cut it down a little bit so I don't end up with the thickest part. What you could do is you could nail knot this, cut the loop off and nail knot this on here. I am simply going to tie a uni knot in there. And then I'm going to later use some UV knot sense to just smooth that knot over so or move through the guides and you end up with a fairly small knot there you can tighten it trim your tags the thick part of the butt section won't cut into your fly lines coating and if you trim it nice and tight there after you tighten it nice and smooth you'll end up with quite a slim knot now you've got your tapered leader there this one it goes down to 3x and it's nine foot so now i have to think about my total length so this tapered leader is now going to go to the side tip. So I'm going to be cutting this back again. You can actually use a 0x if you wanted to make it a bit longer. I have to consider the total length this is going to end up as well. So if you have a 9 foot total leader, then the maximum you can attach to that tippet wise is another 9 foot. So you must consider the depth you're going to fish at as well. So if you're going to be fishing shallow water, you might only need 3 or 4 feet of tippet. But if you are fishing deeper water, which is probably the rivers I'm going to be fishing, uh, especially on the Dongariro, you might want a leader that's probably as long as nine foot. So because I have a leader length limit, I need to now consider what I'm gonna do in terms of the total length. So I'm gonna keep my overall tapered leader length to roughly nine or 10 foot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this three X section back. I'm actually gonna be replacing that section I just cut off with the bicolor cyta line. All I'm gonna do here is a triple surgeon's knot, but I'm actually gonna leave the tag on the cyta line because it gives me a marker to uh, be a bit more visibility to have that tag. I'm just gonna cut it a little bit shorter and just leave, so two or three inches of tag out. Now I wanna look at my overall length because I wanna keep this tapered leader section to nine feet. Cut that cyta leader there. And that is essentially my leader. From there, I can now attach my tippet. Many people go with a tippet ring I don't have a tippet ring, so I'm going to be touching my tippet straight to here. And that tippet length will, determ will be determined by the depth of the water I'm going to be fishing. So the Tongariro and the rivers I'm intending to fish with this can be quite deep. So I'm actually going to go quite long on this tippet section. And uh, normally when I'm indicator fishing, I will have up to a 12 foot leader fishing uh, like that. But obviously you have to account for the drift and things. So you have to have 1.5 times the depth of the water with an indicator system. I'm going to go and start with about six or seven foot overall tippet length so that's to the point fly and then i'm going to have a dropper uh, a little bit above that so i'm going to tie my six feet of tippet to my sighter now you could use a tippet ring as i said or i'm just going to be using a 310 surgeon's knot again and again i'm going to leave that sighter tag i'm going to cut the nylon tag so to do my dropper i am just going to be tying again 310 surgeon's knot with my dropper and I'll just keep the tag in to attach the fly on and I'll have about, I don't know, 50 centimeters between the two flies. So my point fly will go on this end, my smaller dropper will go on this end and that is my initial leader setup done. So what you can do additional or instead of the sighter is use this uh, Scafar's wax. What that allows you to do is just a high vis mark on the nylon and you can end up with a lovely I have a stretch there on your nylon. As I said, you can use it additional. So say I have got my very long tippet, but the water is shallower and I don't want to go so deep. I can just mark my tippet above with that scafaz and I still have a sight tip. It's actually also acceptable in the Taupo region. It doesn't add weight to the line and it doesn't float. So you end up with a preparation that is acceptable under the Taupo licensing rules and we've checked with them as well. So that's the leader setup and uh, next I guess we'll pop into the water and I'll test some of the casting and setting it up. Well here we are on the Tongariro River ready to test my Euronim setup that I've just shown you throughout this video. 
I am however going to be making a couple of changes so I'm in the Taupo region as I said I have to have the 18 foot leader set up so I've got to stick with that but what I've decided to do is ditch the 3x leader for 4 or 5x I'm probably going to start with 4x just because what I've learned from a variety of the material is that the diameter of the tippet makes a real difference in the sink rate of the flies so I'm just going to go with that 4x tippet and set it up that way and I'm going to start off with a probably six foot of tippet rather than the nine foot I was planning to just uh, because the section I'm going to fishing is not quite that deep uh, yeah so we'll uh, see how that goes so what I'm fishing here today is a section you would have seen in the kiwi nymphing video by Rob Baz and Johnny Gummer that I filmed a while back and uh, what it has here is a quite fast current in the middle and then we're going to try and fish well fish our feet first but we're going to be mainly focusing on the currents on the other side which is a bit slower sort of glassy seams and uh, this Euronymphing rig is going to allow us to fish across the fast currents and into those seams without having the problem of the drag a fly line would create uh, when you have all these different speeds of current so we're going to give it a go and see how we get on so i've tied all my flies now for the point fly i've gone with one of a version of johnny gummer's uh, carpet caddis pattern that i tied and that's on a size 10 barbless jig hook with a formal tungsten bead and uh, got a bit of CDC and a few wraps of lead as well. So it's nice and heavy to get down. Then it's 50 centimeters and my dropper above that is a Frenchy style size 14 Pheasantdale, red wire and a sort of gold bead and a peacock dub. So we'll see how that works. I'm also fishing with Pavel here and Lewis is further down. They're both swinging streamers. And uh, so Pavel's just started below where I'm gonna be starting. And um, I'm just going to work my way out. So I'm definitely working my way out first and fishing the water in front of me first. Bottom. That's what I want to know I'm getting to. Definitely uh, different to get used to this. And I'm see I can see I'm reaching my arm out too far already. Well, I'm gonna try and not reach my arm so far up. Otherwise I can see I'm gonna get a sore arm. It's interesting trying to control that. Yeah we got a fish! Yes! It's a small one to start off with, but it's a fish! First fish on the uh, Euro rig. Awesome. Well, that didn't take long at all. It's quite small, but for the Tongariro, but nice. This uh, long rod and the soft tip, it seems to work. Oh, I've got my net on the wrong side. Oops, shop hands, this is a bit of a disaster with the netting. But I took that uh, pheasant tail. Need, oh. oh, too much line in. Okay, sorry, netting disaster. Cool, got it. Awesome. First fish on the Euro. It took the uh, pheasant tail, the dropper. There we go. First fish on Euro Nymph. Little rainbow, but they all uh, they all count. Cool. Now, as you obviously know, with this is I'm learning this technique, and I'm hoping you can learn along with me and pick up some of the things I learn. Oh, I think I missed one there. Um, and I'll share the resources and the things I learn as I go. I'll be doing a few videos on this technique. So I really hope it's helpful and if you do this already and you're good at it and you've learned or you find some resources that are good, do share them please so that everybody can find those resources in the comments and places. So. 
that would be good. Yep, there we go. Got him. Another small fish. But it's fish number two. Awesome. This one took the uh oh and it still took the dropper as well, the pheasant tail. Nice. Not long after Powell's fish. This fish a little fish is strong. I have to get him on the reel. Came upstream, back up, and sideways. He's fighting nicely, this little fish. Feisty little rainbow. Come upstream. Nice, very nice. I'm not sure what's going on with the lens, but seems to be uh, having some fog issues. Yes, there we got a good fish. That is a good fish and I think it's a brown just by the way it's behaving at the moment. Might open my drag a little bit. Yeah, not so light. Yeah, this looks like a uh, like a good fish. Solid fish. I'm gonna walk it down a bit. Lewis has come up. This will be the uh, fish of the morning if I can land this. Ah, oh, busted me. Drag was too tight. Well, the system is working. Two small rainbows in the bag and that brown was a good fish. I could see him and I should have lightened up my drag, not tightened it slightly and yeah, busted me. Put the same fly back on it, also took the pheasant tail, so yeah, see if I can get a decent one to the bank. Let's hope so. So this morning when we came, we saw some fish rising in the soft water on the edge under the trees there. I haven't seen any more rising yet. So there's one in front of me. Oh, I spooked it. Got one. Got one. Nice. That was fantastic. That was perfect. I was just sitting in that roughly bit in the shallows. I was a little bit slow on the take. This is the tricky part of 4X. Oh. That was pretty cool. Ended up with a nice fish and there he goes. <laughs> well, anyway, that was a really nice fish. So. Fantastic. Okay, well, it's making our way to the lower river. Oh, okay, how does that snag? So hopefully I get a little bit of reward for this frustration. I don't no, I think this gets fished that often. Yes, yes. Try and keep that one downstream. And I forgot I've lost my net, so this is going to be interesting. Gotta keep it out of that snag as well. And light tip it. Nothing but a challenge. Don't run up there. Alright, it's going to run all the way up there. Trying to spook the entire pool. There's a good fish there, it's nice, it's good. Exactly where I expected it. I wonder what it took. Very nice. Getting used to this urine, I'm thinking, slowly. 
I reckon this is a fresh run fish. I'm not sure what my plan is for landing it. I'm gonna go take it down the pool, I reckon. Probably a freshy. Yeah, it looks fairly fresh. Not so huge, but not that big. It's taken the uh, pheasant tail. I'm gonna have to maneuver it into the shallows here. The net problem is gonna be a problem. So it might cause me to lose this, but the hooks are barbless. I must say the soft tip of soft tip of this thing does really protect the uh, just tip it. Oh, I don't want it to go down. So side strain really helps with that sort of stuff. And now I'm going to try and wiggle it across the current and back with side pressure. It's just sitting in front of that log. I don't want it to go over it. I want to keep it in the shallows here. Downstream of me is not ideal. It should be tiring now. I'll get it in the shallows here. It should be all right. As long as I don't let it go over that log. Nice fish. Nice fresh fish. Beautiful hen. Absolutely lovely fish. And then how go. Wow, nice. Very good. So in front of that tree, there's a couple more fish. So an example here. I wouldn't be able to do this with a traditional nymph line because I've got a fast current in the middle and those fish are sitting in a slow current under the trees. There's one specifically in front of the tree that I have a good feeling about. Oh, oh I was late on that one. That one took it, took the flight. Okay, I'm just trying a different nymph in the pheasant tail just because we've seen it now several times. Yep, yeah, got one. Nice. Nice. Oh, it's coming right towards me. Whoa, jump. Ah, oh, came off. I couldn't get tight on it quick enough. Ah, got it. Ah. Yep, got him. Nice. I feel like a big fish yet. Oh, it's going to be an interesting place to land the fish. That's a nice fish. Not too bad. No, I have no idea how I'm going to land it. I'll bring it down again, I think. It's going to be the only way. It's not a big fish, but... Oh. I'm going to have to bring it to that same spot, I reckon. Oh, busted me. I hand hit my real handle. Ah, uh, just as it took off. Bad behavior with the hand, real hand. Anyway. Lost fish because of stupidity. We have to recap. Maybe in that calm patch on the opposite side. Got him. That's a good fish. Nice. Nice. I thought there might be one in there. Oh no, wrapped around the reel. Okay. Landing spot. Zero. Got a net. This is gonna be oh, nowhere to land with this. Yeah, but look. Where can I go? So yeah, this is gonna be interesting. Battery of the GoPro is nearly flat, so I am gonna stop that here and fight that fish and if I land it I'll show it to you okay I landed it um, but the family's asked me to take a nice fresh fish home so I reckon that one's going to be the one that goes home uh, I do keep the odd fish not generally from backcountry rivers and stuff but uh, from the Taupo region I do often keep fish so that's the end result for the uh, trout for the family that's a bit of an Easter lunch approved by wife can't wait to dig into it
Well folks, I really hope you enjoyed this video to learn uh, Euronymphing with me. There'll be more Euronymphing videos and I'll keep sharing what I learned. So I hope this is giving you some insight into Euronymphing and I've certainly learned a lot. Caught some fish and I'll be trying this technique and practicing it more and getting better at it. So definitely has some uh, options in my arsenal. So it's good to finally learn how to do it. So yeah, hopefully I'll catch a few more fish. If you enjoy these videos, why not watch another one up there? another one up there and i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching